Oh, there's a new Brennan Herrera. Okay, let's do the Brennan Herrera. Tommy Tommy, what baby. What is up, you, uh, yeah, let's you do sex it. YouTube mother lovers? Now, today is a very special day because today is the day I get to show you guys something that you guys have been hounding me for. Mm. Okay, well, I'm a little excited already. I also want to know where he's located. I know Texan... Texan gun YouTubers is just is just the thing, right? Ever since we teased it. Which makes sense, because actually Texas has so much land available that it would be not unreasonable for a relatively successful YouTuber to say, hey, as a business expense, I'm going to purchase this land as a range for my channel. So let's just get right down to brass tacks. Today, I am happy to present to you the St. Petersburg typewriter, a.k.a. The Kami Tommy. Okay, all right, let me see. This looks like... This looks like madness, for starters. Um, so what makes it the Kami Tommy? Well, it looks like it has a custom Tommy gun-style lower furniture foregrip. Um, so like a modified version, perhaps, of the AKM. But this, this entire locking mechanism is way different. This is super cursed. Um, and this muzzle device is an affront to God. And look at this, the shortened barrel. This can't be US legal. This is because you've got to short the barrel or the sh or at least it's a shorter gas piston. Um, again, I'm always sort of puzzled when I'm just like, when they're like, we're going to shorten the weapon. It's like, sh the, the, turn it into a bullpup, get rid of the stock. Oh man. Okay. This is, this is really cursed. This is extremely cursed. So we're just going to hit K and we're going to experience this cursed gun. This is the theme of today's stream is things that the goodness of the world has never touched. Honestly surprised a man whose primary weapon, who has a web, fully licensed weapon manufacturing business dedicated solely to making troll guns. Man, I should start making people like my video. Uh, okay, opulent dog ass pizza or burgers? Uh, pizza. You want to see it in action? Yeah, I do. I do. I can't lie. Ooh, the other hot debate emerging in chat, pizza or burgers, right? I'm a pizza man, uh, but I also love burgers, like a lot. Um, so it's close. And Emerald Wolf saying, burgers, pizza is overrated. Ooh, both. Yeah, we got to see. Both, both of them. Both of them. That's a, that's a great... Bofum spelled B O F F U M. I love it. Bofum. Oh, weird. It shoots Tokarev rounds. Okay, this is even more cursed. I wonder if this music is copyrighted. I kind of hope not, but I don't really care. This is just. Jesus. Jesus, it works. A burger with pizza buns? Maybe a pizza with hamburger on it? <laughs> Tiny Lucifer, Joe Rogan, nice to see you on Twitch. Listen, I am so much better than Joe Rogan because I'm not high right now. Uh... Also, I'm not on Spotify, but also if Spotify offered me $100 million, I'd probably, uh, you'd probably find me on Spotify. Yeah, this is so cursed. I'm just watching this. Donnie Lucifer, also because I'm not on TRT. Um, Joe, Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan loves challenging uh, comedians who aren't on steroids to do like a health competition when he himself is like on 
juicing. I <laughs> love how, is this the target? He's just hitting whatever. Keep the change, you filthy animal. Oh, that's a reference to FPS Russia. God. Ah, I used to love watching FPS Russia back in the good old days, man. And, you know, I'm really glad that Kyle landed on his feet as a co-host of PKA um, and got f crazy jacked. Uh, I guess uh, that's, that has me less, like, super, you know. But, like, you know, good for him. But, man, that shit with the ATF was nonsense. But also, like, you feel for him. He, you know... I don't know, man. Once once he knew that he had the ATF's ire, getting rid of that gun collection and going to ground is probably the right call, you know? So what the fuck is this thing? So originally we called it the St. Petersburg typewriter as kind <laughs> of a, you know, joke about a, a Russian AK equivalent of the Thompson, which is the uh, Chicago typewriter, specifically the model Thompson. Okay, I gotta say, I am really uncomfortable with this weapon being stored with a half full magazine. Uh, I think that's just bad form. That had the drum magazine and this forward grip here. Iconic gangster weapon, and uh, still look- She posts, I think it isn't an, a, a, gang, a reference to the original Home Alone movie, but I think it's one that FPS Russia made first. Maybe. Now you have me doubting myself. Looks pretty gangster as an AK. So Chicago typewriter, St. Petersburg typewriter, even though later on uh, I started to like the name Tommy Tommy a little bit better. <laughs> Rolls off the tongue. Now, the original photo had a drum in it. Also, I'm just going to point out, I'm also somewhat bothered by the fact it's not on safe. Listen, I'm a... Stickler is an understatement. I am militant. Um, militant about weapon safety. Uh, so I am bothered when the barrel goes anywhere near the camera, which he's actually pretty good about. Um, but I'm a believer in weapon on safe, man. That's how I was trained. Weapon on safe. And if you put it in storage, don't store it with ammunition in it. It, but it didn't really specify the caliber. So I asked you guys whether you wanted to go 45 ACP drums like the Thompson or uh, something a little bit more Soviet like the PPSH-41, which is chambered in 7.62 by 25 Tokarev. The answer was resounding <laughs> Soviet 7.62 Tokarev. So that's the direction we went. And honestly, it just kind of feels more AK somehow. Now, just a reminder, it was my subscribers and the effort of this community that got us over that 200,000 like mark that made this. Yeah, it sort of bothers me the idea that um, that all of these may have rounds in these magazines, right? And yeah, I've also heard, though I've heard stories, some people say that you want to store your magazines empty or store them full, but I think empty will preserve the spring more because compressing the spring and leaving it there for long periods of time, I've heard is not great for a magazine. It's gonna happen. If you would like to be a part of said community, first off, be very, very careful. It's a jungle out there. But yeah. if that doesn't scare you away, you could always just hit that subscribe button, see more cool projects like this. Now, something like this, obviously, like we were mentioning, is a very, very custom. It could very well be decorative. That's a good point. Almost every part on this gun was modified one way or other to end up with this final product. Very time and labor intensive. In fact, this project has been going on behind the scenes for several, several months. And since I get the feeling that this video is not gonna be popular, uh, with uh, our overlords, we'd like to thank our sponsor, <laughs> TACPAC, a.k.a. TACPAC. TACPAC is a... All right, let's slide through TACPAC. Give him credit. Oh, well, that's a quick That's a quick shout out. Okay, there you go. Tokarev, AK. Again, we've talked about this. I've started skipping over ads because they may actually be competitors of my sponsors. You guys should absolutely watch the original video and support the people that support him. But just in case uh, in the future... You know, some sponsors are like, hey, you can't have our competitors in, et cetera, et cetera. Like this, just simply you know, swapping a barrel. They don't really make those barrels. So the barrel had to be done completely from scratch, wow. uh, as well as a lot of the operation of the gun had to change a little bit, especially when it comes to feeding from a PPSH-41 drum, because I don't know if you know this, but AKs aren't built to do that. Most AKs don't have uh, this going on. Yeah. So we had to do some strategic cuts and actually design an entire- I want to know who we is. Like, how big is his team in this gun work? Entirely new magwell here. And like, yes, I understand he's been trying to make the AK-50, but like, surely he has to have some other money-making enterprise at work here. So Zach actually had to design plates 
to go in the front and back. We thought about an entire Magwell assembly to do it, but it turns out just being easier all the way around uh, for uh, just plates, like one in the rear and one in the front that uh, the drum can kind of you know press up against, slide into place, and it includes a feed ramp so that the mm. 762 Toker Rev can actually feed into the chamber without the traditional feed geometry of an AK front trunnion. This is, this is technical stuff, man. This is really technical. I'm, I'm kind of into it. Once again, designed for 762 by 39, which is dramatically different than 762 Toker Rev. So I'm radically oversimplifying this. We've got our modified uh, Magwell uh, here, our uh, mag catch, as well as the cut here uh, to fit the drum. And this is our front plate here. Got a plate that's welded in place. Uh, the little bottom area here of the trunnion kind of taken away. Not really necessary, especially since there's no actual lockup in the trunnion. We went direct blowback since this is a pistol cartridge, but you've got your little feed ramp there that feeds rounds directly into the chamber. Shout out to the Yankovic Armament for helping us out and laser cutting these for us, by the way. While this work- Mmm, interesting. I mean, I'd be curious to know how many design failures did they have? Like, what is their design process? Um, is it trial and error? Is it done on AutoCAD with all the modifications? Do they design something in AutoCAD and then sort of test it? Do they like partially test it? You know, like test the field ramp by sort of cycling rounds through it? Um, I don't know. Work with the magwell, mag catch, feed ramp, and the barrel is to allow us. But could you even use like a computer simulator to design to simulate the mechanical functions of a firearm? It seems like something that should exist because the interior workings of a firearm are not that complex necessarily, right? And they're meant to be sort of repeated and really well understood. To be able to fire this little bad boy, 762 Tokarev. Now to show off some of the power that we're working with, with this gun being chambered in 7.62 by 25 Tokarev, we're gonna be doing our traditional White Claw penetration test. Sandbag, huge improvement for that, by the way. I think this White Claw mm. smells like a rat, boys. Firing, three, two, one. Oh yeah, got plenty of spray on that one. So to the surprise of no one. Oh, interesting. Zolanus points out that they use vi virtual simulators, 3D printing, and good old fashioned trial and error in the AK-50. That's pretty cool. That's that's actually neat. Like I love seeing how th complex things like this are built. And the 7.62 by 25 Tokarev made short work of the White Claw. Now let's compare that to the nine millimeter, the traditional choice for uh, you know most submachine guns, definitely the more popular caliber. So I don't have a nine mil submachine gun out here today. I know I'm caught lacking. I do have what? this. What, no submachine gun? How dare you, sir? This which is my new carry gun actually from Danger Close. It's a gucci up Glock 19 chambered in nine millimeters. So let's go ahead. Yeah, you know, that's the thing with the Glocks, man. It's like, uh, you want, something cooler to be better but it's not it's just like an optimized design it's just yeah so this is they call it mm, so what i want uh, it's it's a in business it's called the like a first mover disadvantage and that's the idea that the first person to roll out a new technology by definition will have suboptimal versions of it because when you roll out that new technology bring it to market it's going to have all sorts of flaws in it right uh that won't be revealed until it's used millions of times right or at scale and this is true of firearms right or individual pistols where they didn't become widely used until maybe the mid 1800s in the or in the modern semi-automatic configuration until around the late 1800s and so you had this first generation of pistols and it wasn't or automatic pistols and there was so much room for improvement right you didn't think about hey the they have to be maintained by the end user and they have to be you know, fired repeatedly and they get dirty and messy and, you know, are used in, in combat environments. And so you have these iterations, right? So the first generation is going to be the worst, right? That's why you have these very complex precision like Lugers and uh, the Mauser broom handle and the uh, Browning uh, uh, high power, right? They're a little too complex and not that user friendly. And then 
you have generations later, they get to look at the flaws of the first gen and make the second gen better. And then by the time you get to the third or fourth gen, you've achieved a level of optimization. That's sort of the life cycle of, if you look at the assault rifle, right? This is something where you had this first gen assault rifle, right? The earliest versions of it, um, the AK-47, the M16, um, or even the M14, I guess not, it's not really an assault rifle, but it's like a proto. And then over time, it moves into uh, it, it, designs are improved as they're tested and tested in the real world, as they get more real world use until eventually you're where we're at now with high end rifles like the AK. I mean, I'd say the AK-12 and the M4A1 or M4. I don't know where I guess maybe we're past the M4A1 and give this a shot. Nine millimeter mango in three, two, one. Man, okay, he was really close to that. Like, I really actually concerningly close to that. <laughs> oh, man, that was so much spray and the wind did not help. Now, that probably looked a little more impressive and I totally forgot this until I shot, but I'm carrying uh, hollow points. Uh, so that probably contributed to why that was a little more aggressive, especially out of a shorter barrel like this. By the way, thank you to the Danger Close guys for hooking me up with this. And also, I think they even have a code for you guys. So if you want to check out the description, the pinned comment, mm. uh, yeah, no, I just appreciate them uh, hooking me up with this and hooking you guys up as well if you're interested. Now, much like this 762 by 25 AK barrel, uh, this furniture, the uh, AK Thompson furniture, doesn't really exist. Oh, God. Custom woodworking. So this is something else that we had to have uh, fabbed up for us custom. Uh, thanks to Kalashna Carver on that, by the way. The finish looks fantastic. Oh, wow, that's kind of cool that someone who their whole gimmick is just to make uh, like Kalashnikov furniture carved up. I want to I want to see this guy. I want to check this guy out. Obviously, I'm doing it on the second monitor uh, because, you know, no, <laughs> like we got to. Ooh, oh, interesting. All right, this is Kalashnikarver, one-of-a-kind AK Furniture, St. Louis, Missouri. Pick items close to what you want, then leave detailed notes at checkout. Custom requests subject to price changes. Curly wood quality is subject to availability. All orders are custom made by hand. Our wait times currently range from three to five months. Feel free to email us. Wow, interesting. <laughs> M70 Yugo Dong, plain grip, Mac 90 stock. Interesting. I want to see his fancy shit. I want to see like the most sh sh sort, sort low to high, baby. Okay. Interesting. Oh, wow. That, that is, imagine doing that shit by hand. This is, this is fascinating, but also like not that elaborate. Like it is and it isn't, you know? I mean, this is kind of cool. The bandito style handguard, but like, but like you could probably do this at your house you know like you could i mean if you had the time and the patience you could probably do this at your house okay this is this this is pretty cool i mean some of these finishes are beautiful though right the pkm stock with the slant cut yeah some of these finishes are beautiful right that's what's kind of making this honestly let's see what they got let's see what they got uh, maybe they, they probably post their plus custom work on here oh interesting oh look at that in three days, we're closing the books for three weeks to work on existing orders. Limited amounts of more popular items will become available. Wow. So they must be killing it. Wow. Well, this is this is beautiful. This dark cherry. I think this is gorgeous. This is this is fine to me. Um, this is also gorgeous. This grain of the wood there, that's looks badass. Okay, this looks kind of jank. I, I gotta say, this this looks like a like a bad parody. Um Guns, guns, glorious guns. Okay, this this thing, this is like uh I don't even know what to make of this. I don't know what to make of this at all. Like that whole stock thing. This is just bizarre. Real bizarre. But okay. Ooh, this one's gorgeous too. Sorry, I'm a sucker for high end woodworking. Um, I wish I was like a super woodworker, honestly. This is something that was done much Maybe. in that Thompson wood style. Maybe when I uh, am tired of content creation, I'll just be like, run, have some like bougie woodworking Instagram account. From the uh, 
the, the, the pistol grip, the uh, lower handguard here. We could have just used like a Romanian dong or something, but this does look a lot more, more Thompson and it looks damn near identical to the original photo. And of course, a nice stock to match the, the finish of, uh, of all this furniture. It, it came out pretty damn good, I must say. Now up front, we have a gas block that we have modified. Uh, Zach had welded on the uh, top of an AK front sight block. That way we can get, you know, some sort of sights out of this thing. And I know you might be wondering, why didn't you just use a combo block? So anyway, on the muzzle brake, we have a <laughs> Thompson style muzzle brake that, you know, just kind of really just brings the whole thing together. We also have mm. a bitch ass style flange here uh, to cover up for where the barrel has to protrude further back than a typical AK. Oh, uh, it's, oh, this we, oh to you're right. Blowback. There is no lockup, but you had to change a bunch of stuff. Oh yeah, I gotta see this. As well. Oh yeah, so you see on the inside, you know, just traditional, you know, select fire AK. So here on the bulk here, you can see you got a custom piston here. It's not actually a piston since this isn't gas operated, like said, it's direct blowback because you know, pistol caliber, you can do that. Really just here to accommodate bolt mass because on a direct blowback, bolt mass is important so that the gun doesn't explode. This is so technical. You see on a direct blowback, the only thing stopping the gun from exploding immediately because you do have a, you know, a cartridge that's exploding inside of your chamber uh, is the mass of the bolt. It's overcoming the weight to be able to open up and cycle the gun. Oh, okay, interesting. This is really, really interesting to me, actually. Too heavy, it doesn't move. Too light, it explodes. Whereas on a rifle round, you typically have a rotating bolt or something like that that it will rotate and lock into battery. That's why the front trunnion and the bolt on an AK specifically are so important. Because if that lockup isn't solid enough to stop that explosion, uh, you, your gun's just gonna blow up. But this- That's bad. No, I didn't know any of this. This is all totally new information to me. This one being direct blowback, we just had to do some modifications here. <laughs> some crazy modifications. Don't worry, this was already kind of a fucked up Bolton carrier, so we're not using good parts here. Uh, to where we can just... Wow. Wow, that looks sleeve very DIY, here, but... To stop it from rotating back into this cam groove. Instead, it rotates out, just like an AK, out to the side, but we, it rotates out here. And to top it all off, we've got an original 1940s PPSH-41 drum. Now the PPSH- This is so cursed. H-41 drums obviously look very sexy, but they were built- I mean, the size of the bolt is not relevant to firearm safety, right? Like, like the causes of engineering flaws in a rifle, like you don't engineer, you don't build the rifle, right? So firearm safety is focused on end user safety. Now an armorer would definitely have a different set of uh, safety training, right? So, um, you know, military armors at whatever level, they, they get additional training on how to inspect uh, of, you know, wear and tear in the metal and that sort of thing. But what he's describing is a gun safety for gun designers, which is, you know, like, like the difference between difference between knowing how to like put your car in park and drive to the supermarket and drive like a, a, an indie supercar, right? Two just totally different levels of knowledge and skill. Built to handle higher cyclic rates like the PPSH was capable of which means we get to do stuff like this. Well, boys, you can file that one under promises made, promises kept. So after many months of custom mm -hmm. work and crazy fabrication, here it is, we have it, the Kami Tommy. Your did it. Thanks to everyone who helped us hit the goal to make this happen, and thanks to everyone for your patience, the, the ones that were actually patient. Anyhow, guys. <laughs> uh, you know there's a bunch of angry assholes in the Discord being like, where's my gun? Did I want to do the Dubby Dubby video. Like, Jesus, dude. He had to re-engineer it from the ground up. I don't have a break. Guys, it was just another project for the books. Be sure to subscribe and stick around. To so I wonder. All right, I'll tell you. He's got to know that that thing is not going to be in another video. I wonder if he just is, is like, hey, you can buy it. Like... Can you go on his website and just be like Tommy Tommy for sale? Like, bid it up, you know? See the next cool project that we do. Thank you for watching to the end. And as always, I'll see you sexy YouTube mother lovers in the next video. God, please don't swing the barrel around. It just bothers me. All right, guys. That, that was a time. That was a time we had. Oh, wait, there's some outtakes. All right, let's, let's watch some outtakes. Thanks. Fuel is my obsession to make the perfect weapon like us.
This is so Slavic. Outro song, AK50. It is fucking windy. It's fucking windy. <laughs> what the fuck? God damn. It is fucking windy. Somebody order the spicy chicken nuggets from Wimdy's. <laughs> the fuck? Now the PPSH41 drum obviously looks very sexy, but it's meant to handle higher cyclic rates, kind of like I love how it's just like one guy PPSH41. filming this. You can see it in the glasses. That stupid. That was redundant. Now the PPSH41 drum looks obviously super sexy, but it's also now, the PPSH-41 drum, aside from looking obviously very sexy, uh, is meant to ha- fuck. Now, the PPSH-41 drum- Mmm, I feel- I've, this- this- this also is give- I feel it right here, man. Uh, obviously, I, I try to just, like, wing it on a lot of these videos, but, um, man, I- it's ad reads, I'm so bad about this. I can't believe it's right.